I'm going to start by reading a statement. Can everyone hear me? I'm going to start by... Okay, is anybody not ready? I'm going to start by reading a statement on behalf of the Columbia... I'm going to start by reading a statement on behalf of the Columbia University Apartheid, Apartheid Divest Organizers. At 10 a.m. on Monday, April 29th, Columbia delegates issued written notices to members of the Gaza Solidarity Encampment, instructing them to leave the encampment by 2 p.m. or receive an interim suspension, including eviction, for students in university housing. Faculty in the University Senate have suggested that the university also has plans to expel and arrest students in the encampment with previous disciplinary notices. These repulsive scare tactics mean nothing compared to the deaths of over 34,000 Palestinians. We will not move until Colombia meets our demands or they are moved by force. Colombia's threat to mass suspend, evict, or possibly expel students with only a few hours notice violates university rules. Faculty in the University Senate who rejected Columbia's plan because it is legal, illegal, were informed that rules of university conduct will not be applied in this instance because the university has declared a state of emergency to manufacture consent for mass suspensions and evictions. Protesters have been entirely peaceful and the university has previously agreed that it has no grounds to call in the NYPD. This is not stopping Colombia from illegally declaring a state of emergency, which requires Colombia to falsely identify nonviolent protesters as a clear and present danger. Colombia's threats distributed through flyers are reminiscent of the flyers the Israeli army launches from the sky to Gazans. Today's threats come after days of fruitless negotiations in which the university refused to seriously consider our demands for divestment, financial transparency, and amnesty for students and faculty disciplined in the movement for Palestinian liberation. Colombia pulled out of negotiations over the weekend by threatening students with a mass campus lockdown and the eviction of every undergraduate from their dorms. It is our position that good faith negotiations are not possible so long as the university attempts to win arguments by weaponizing food insecurity, homelessness, and military attacks as leverage. They have informed the university that they are prepared to escalate their direct actions if the university does not adopt basic standards of conduct for negotiations. The university has repeatedly lied to the public about their so-called concessions in negotiations while refusing our request for more transparency. For example, they propose to share information about their direct holdings, neglecting to mention that these account for only 6.12% of Colombia's $784 million publicly traded investments. They also would not consider bare minimum divestment proposals, for example, to divest from the weapons manufacturers that directly profit off of thousands of bombs that have decimated Gaza, killing at least 34,000 Palestinians thus far. Instead of engaging with our negotiators in good faith, the university has done nothing but intimidate protesters in an attempt to disperse the encampment and proceed with the semester as usual, ignoring the ongoing genocide and the institution's complicity in it. We stress that during a genocide, business cannot continue as usual. Today is day 205 of genocide in Gaza. We must take action to end the true state of emergency, Colombia's complicity in genocide. With that, I'm going to turn it over to the amazing people on our negotiation team. No. My name is Sueda Polat. That's spelled S-U-E-D-A, last name Polat, spelled P-O-L-A-T. I'm a student organizer and one of the negotiators for Quad. Earlier today, President Shafiq sent out an email announcing the end of negotiations and declared explicitly that the university will not divest from Israel. 
In that same email, President Shafiq claimed that we had had constructive dialogue regarding the student encampment and made insincere statements regarding the university's actions. The university's negotiations evidenced an elementary understanding of the words boycott and divest, which have been at the heart of the student movement and at the heart of our encampment. While the administration offered us a timeline for review of divestment proposals, they refused to give us any commitment that the ultimate decision would be binding. They offered us limited financial disclosure by giving only their direct holdings, yet not the indirect holdings which account for the vast majority of this university's endowment. They also threw bribes at students. Shafiq talks about early development childhood education programs for Palestinians in the West Bank and Gaza. She talks about a resilience fund for Gazans. This amounts to nothing more than bribery of the student movement. The, the administration also offered a review on the topic of boycott. Instead of closing down the Tel Aviv dual degree program, instead of shutting down the Tel Aviv Global Center, which has not yet broken ground, they said they would review access to these institutions, to these programs, overlooking conveniently the fact that these programs can never be in line with the university's own stated policies of non-discrimination and equal opportunity. This is a smokescreen, bureaucracy is a prison, and the students refuse to trade in the blood of Palestinians. The university has conducted itself with obstinacy and arrogance, refusing to be flexible on some of our most basic points. That said, we were engaging in good faith negotiations until the administration cut them off under threat of suspensions. Where we asked for amnesty, they gave us more discipline. Earlier this morning, university delegates appeared at the entrance of our encampment with disciplinary notices, essentially alerting students that they could choose to do one of two things. One, sign an attestation form at the exit that would put students on academic probation on the condition that they abide by all university rules until June 30, 2025, or until their graduation, whichever comes first. Or the students would be interim suspended, losing access to their housing, losing access to campus, losing access to healthcare on campus, and losing their right to graduation if they are a graduating student. Essentially, these are attempts to stifle the student movement. Once again, the notices are yet another intimidation tactic from the university. The ta these tactics are reminiscent, reminiscent of those employed by the Israeli occupation against our people in Gaza and Palestine. Ironically, the notices assure students that their rights to demonstrate will be protected by the university if they sign these papers. We refuse to operate on the basis of speculation. We want assurances. This encampment is a minor inconvenience compared to the generational shaping events taking place now in Gaza. Throughout the negotiations, the Shafi administration treated this movement as a matter of internal student discipline rather than a movement, or rather than as one of the great moral and political questions of this generation. Colombia's short-sighted short political decision making today in the face of a genocide that has stolen the lives of over 34,000 human beings, women, men, babies in Gaza, that has destroyed lineages and heritage sites and universities, will be st a stain on its legacy forever. The students on this encampment are a gift to Colombia. We offered to give, to give university back its principles. With all eyes on Colombia, the administration could have chosen to divest in a manner that aligned with its, with its past. 
Colombia would rather trump, trample its reputation and instead of being proud of its students and faculty for raising these incredibly important moral questions, we have been hit with little more than threats and petty attacks. This is not a matter of simply violating university rules. This is a movement, an anti-war movement. We have sparked similar Gaza solidarity encampments across the nation and even across the globe. Mahmoud Khalil, M-A-H-M-O-U-D, Khalil, K-H-A-L-I-L. Yes. We'd like to reiterate that our presence on this encampment was never a security risk. In fact, it bonded members of the Columbia community in unprecedented ways on this campus. People from various walks of life coalesced to deliver food and supplies, to do their homework on the lawn, to bring their professors to community, to read a book at the People's Library, or to sing around a guitar song. We will not be moved by these intimidation tactics. You can see outside you now that the students are mobilized. There's hundreds of them here today. They will not be moved. We demand divestment. We will not be moved unless by force. The, the first individual spoke. Are you comfortable giving your name? I am not. You're not. Neil, are you willing to accept the suspension? Again, I'm, I'm a negotiator on behalf of this group. The group today uh, unanimously um, took the decision to continue this encampment until Colombia divests. Your, your negotiation is happening while the campus leaders are being pressured by politicians who call this movement anti-Semitic. What do you think about the, that double pressure they're facing? Can you speak to that a little bit? Double pressure of the administration? Yeah, your school administration. The administration needs to put aside uh, geopolitical interests in U.S. politics and decide on the matter of justice, as it has always done. This university previously divested from apartheid South Africa. This university had a movement against the Vietnam War. This university understands what it means to be principled, but it is buckling under congressional pressure, and that is unacceptable. It is not up to me as a student to make the university act according to its principles. That is up to the university. Well, and, and just, could, you, could you speak directly to this idea that there is the vein of anti-Semitism in this movement? What do you think of that accusation? I think this has been addressed a um, hundred times over for the 12 days or so that we've been on this encampment. There has not been a day that we didn't make an effort to address these claims. And at this point, they are a diversion from the death and the massacre in Gaza, a diversion. That being said, I will answer it once more. We have community guidelines. Every single individual, politicians, members of faculty, students coming from diverse political backgrounds or faith backgrounds, read those community guidelines and enter this space with agreement on those guidelines for open dialogue between all people. There has been no violence on this encampment. Students from diverse backgrounds have shared their religious observances together. We've celebrated Passover. We've celebrated Shabbat twice. We've prayed in congregation. This is a place of community, of communal learning, not violence. They tell us that we have until 2 p.m., which I lost my watch. Um, it's past two. It's past two. We've been asked to disperse, but it is against the will of the students to disperse. We do not abide by university pressures. We act based on the will of the students. Students are aware of the risk of law enforcement. They've faced that risk once before and they know how to come together again uh, in the face of that risk. And we stand in solidarity with other student movements across this nation that are being brutalized in ways worse than Colombia. The disruption of graduation is not the fault of the student movement. 
the disruption of graduation falls solely on the shoulders of this administration that has refused to meet our demands. We don't want a disruption of graduation. They do. confirmed from members of the Senate that there was a state of emergency declared by the administration. Members of the University Senate told us. The negotiations are off the table right now. We cannot accept the proposal by the university that um, refuses the basic tenets of the student movement. If they are willing to meet us on the negotiating table again, we're present. The negotiations are a package deal. We're not agreeing on one, one principle and disagreeing on the next. We're agreeing on the basis of a package. And we do not have that package, and therefore no agreement has been reached. No. Can you reiterate your demands one more time? Divestment, disclosure, amnesty. Quad has always been open to discussion, always been open to negotiation. Despite the administration not engaging in good faith negotiations with us, we have met them on that table. If we are asked again, we will negotiate. We do not yet know how many students are affected by the probation. It's up to their individual will whether or not they sign those papers, and we have no way of knowing until at least the end of the day. I personally have not, but Quad has had contact with other uh, campus protests. Um, that they're similarly motivated, similarly resilient, and uh, they're, they're waiting for divestment, and we share, we share those demands. Do one or two more questions and then we'll end. Yes. Last question. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.